Welcome to Thriving Tribes, my name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. So we did a series yesterday, last week. <laughs> last week, we we're doing a series called Attraction Tactics, and I took you for the five days, Monday to Friday, I took you through what I would do every single day in order to attract my partner. And just to let you know, yes, we did have sex. And the crazy part about it is that when we did, I was a low libido person. I was tired and I'd had the most horrible call three hours before that. So I declined call and it wasn't going really well. So I was sort of carrying the burden of that. So I was really not in the head space to do so. And, but I knew that there was some value for us to connect because that's the only time we had to connect. So I had to overcome my own sexual discomfort in order to get to get, get to that place because I expect you to do the same. So it's, it's not, you know, and again, this is where it becomes really important to understand that the, the balance of power will shift to the point that she becomes the one that chases and you're the one that's sort of the hunted. So uh, again, it's just just goes to show that things will be able to change. And the fact that the way we had that dynamic when we're having that sexual interaction, it goes to show that there isn't a whole lot that you guys need to do in order to change your relationship. Because if you notice the throughout the, the interactions that I had Monday to Friday, I think two of the days, there wasn't much interaction that I had with my partner, but the ones that I did have, or at least the ones that I thought were very significant, were very significant, were the ones on Monday where she she took a disrespectful tone and I was not going to allow her to speak to me in that sort of tone, which was boundary setting. Now, when you do so, it does build trust. A lot of you guys don't address disrespect because you feel like maybe it's going to cause even more of an argument. And then what tends to happen is that she sees you cower or at least acquiesce. So she sees you acquiesce when, you, when she speaks to you in a disrespectful way. And then all of a sudden, in her mind, she just thinks she's won. But subconsciously, she goes, holy shit, this guy crumbles when he's under pressure. How can I trust this guy? And her anxiety levels will go up, her stress levels will go up, and then she's she cannot settle, she cannot chill. So when you can give her that boundary and say, dude, fucking hell, dude, you cannot speak to me like that. I don't expect you to speak to me like that. I will never speak to you like that. Chill the fuck up, you know. So I mean, I didn't put in those words, but I'm trying to exaggerate for effect that you have to set that boundary when you do it might cause even more friction, which you should be willing to take on. And when you do, what then tends to, what tends to happen is that or on, on a superficial level, she's like, oh fuck, this guy is really annoying. But on a subconscious level, she's thinking, yeah, that's exactly the guy I want, that's under pressure, you're willing to stand for something. So he needs to see that evidence that you can stand for something. So that was incredibly powerful for the, rest of the interaction because it it set the tone of the week for example so and i always talk about setting the tone as in if you're playing an american football game your first tackle is going to be the most incredible it has to be the most vicious and the most crazy tackle my, my rugby coach told me this he used to say Corey, the first tackle has to be the most vicious the most he, he has to feel his ancestors that's an african term he has to feel his ancestors have to feel it and so and it was incredible. So you could see that the first tackle, once you hit him hard, he doesn't want to play that game anymore. So again, and that's not what I'm saying. So don't tackle your wives, but you just take, it's just an example. Anyways, so it set the tone for the week and the other interactions that we had, again, while I was doing, addressing that boundary, then the other important point was that I kept a neutral state. So I didn't get angry or neither did I get, you know, um, like I just kept it neutral. So I was just not faced by the whole situation that was happening. And you'll see that there was a theme across all the interactions that I had. So even when we did have good interactions where she was chasing or when we were playful, I wasn't getting overly excited about the whole situation, which is another thing that we addressed as well. And then the second negative interaction that we had, which was important, was an outside external factor so she's outside she's doing something at work and then she had a, a weird conversation with the, with the boss 
which then affected her state, which then she brought to the house. And that was now beginning to interfere with our, the peace of the house. So again, I had to address that. But again, I didn't address it with uh, me getting angry or me. What I did was just allowing myself to get it to talk about it, me remain in a neutral state, and then not allow the way she's behaving based off of that to affect my state because that's what she needed to do. She wanted to, she couldn't, she didn't, she if, it didn't feel a sense of control. So in order to feel a sense of control, she would have probably started moving things around in the environment and in moving us around is the, the family. So um, if we react, she gets pissed off. Let me start again. So she, she had this lack of control and then therefore by in contr controlling our, our emotional state from moving from uh, happy or neutral to where she was, you know, it would have made her feel better about herself, which is a weird thing that normally happens amongst women. I don't know how the I'm going. To, I still have to figure out what how it happens because it this happens across all cultures that they do so. So there's something that happens where she, because of her low state, she tries to bring it down to her state. And usually, when you go to that low state, you get angry because you've been pushed in that. And then when you get when you react to it from from that it gives a license to be pissed off because all of a sudden she sees that you've and again in in many sort of circles they call them different things in the pickup art history we used to call it a shit test or some people calling testing or but there's something that happens when she's low state she has to do now she has to try and bring you down and when she brings you down if you get angry that you've been brought down what tends to happen is that she feels a sense of control especially when you get angry then it's all of a sudden com confess it gives her the opportunity to then lash out and say fucking hell dude you, this is your your there's something wrong with you and so on and really it's a, it's a, a way of projecting but really that's a, a way it's a way of projecting and when I say projected, it's just a way of her then really trying to put those feelings on you that she's feeling for herself type thing. So she, she sort of feels a sense of control. So anyways, without going too deep with that, um, that was one of the interactions that we had. So because I knew what was happening, I was able to not allow my state to go down, which then forces that whatever was internally bothering her to continuously bother her at the same time. I didn't offer up a, a hand of help because again, if I offer up a hand of help, she becomes dependent on me to help her through those anxiety things, which is very bad because she, she's she's old enough and big, she's old enough to be dealing with life. And again, if I'm not here, then what happens? So she has to build the skill to build to navigate all of that. So again, I didn't do anything, but what I did was be supportive if she needed me to and also offered up any you know, point, if she needs me to make a decision upon something, then I'll make a decision for her. That was my only offer, and then I moved on. And then by the time we got to the, to the Friday, she was really, I states the way she viewed me as a partner, in fact, the way she viewed me was more of a partner than somebody who was a burden or somebody who was weak or somebody, it's just loads of respect, so by the, uh, Friday evening, uh, she sent me a few messages just of appreciation, of affirmation about the relationship and so on. And I, I thought that was really sweet. And it really just put the 95% chance of us having sex to a complete 99% point chance. So I knew that was going to happen. It just it happened that I had a very difficult call um, with somebody two or three hours before that happened. So I was really affected by what we had talked about. So again, I had to navigate now uh, those sort of um, feelings of sexual discomfort and really start connecting. We had a really good connection afterwards and it's spilled over into this week, which is pretty good. But the one important point is that that was last week. That's the whole, this is a whole new week. In fact, as soon as we were finished and connected, it engaged. <laughs> us for the next time so i started seducing her from the time that i finished up until the next time it happens again i'm not doing the same thing some of you guys sort of switch off then wait till the next time and then which is probably a friday the when you start but i as soon as that happened from saturday sunday i was already doing the same thing which is 
very important that most of you guys it's a it's not a a sprint it's a marathon when it comes to attraction so you have to look at it as though um your a lifestyle type thing so it's and again when i was speaking to some some um ladies there's a post on instagram where people are going nuts about it where this guy is trying to basically it's a gorilla sort of lurking and is the caption was me waiting for my wife um before she sleeps or something so this got thousands and thousands of comments and there's a lot of women you know just trying to shame men for wanting sex and one of the things i said was you know if you're not prepared to make your man a priority then basically what a lot of women are saying oh you know that's outrageous what if she's tired what she's what if she's been at work all day and so on i said well it's pretty shit if you cannot make your man a priority in fact if he's the last thing that you think of for the day it means that your intimacy is you're giving him uh intimacy scraps and if that's all you've got to give in the relationship then you don't deserve to be in a relationship in fact it's not a priority for you and uh, you obviously can tell they went nuts about it and then um i also pointed out the fact that if if you don't have any energy at the end of the day why isn't that you cannot prioritize doing it first thing in the day i said because this is the most important relationship in your life so why don't you make time in the beginning of the day when you put the most energy when the most because if it is a priority for you the marriage then you should treat it as such because most of you guys and I said again pointed most of you guys you say you love your husbands but you respect your bosses way more than you anyways I was going into these women and they obviously didn't like it <laughs> and I was having the time of my life this weekend but I'm, I've said all of that to say that a lot of you guys your women are just do not have that right balance when it comes to priority and some of it is just you guys you have to point that out when you have that conversation a lot of you guys you put you point out at the fact that there's lack of sex and how it makes you feel it induces feelings of empathy or anger or frustration inside of her which doesn't deal with the issue but when you talk about and energy expenditure and priorities and where you are going as a couple and seeing that you're below par it changes the interaction to something where you can start building some, on onto it so again thank you very much guys uh, i'm not going to go any further with this i think i've uh, given you enough to really consider some of in fact how what you're going to be doing for the rest of the week and how you're going to approach your relationship this rest of this week so really excited to have made this episode hopefully you guys had a really good weekend and we're going to make more great weekends as you guys follow up on this podcast and we've got some really cool things that are coming up um the main one this week is a coaching session or at least a, a lesson that is called uh tangible it's about tangibles and intangibles so it's about how do you build that system in your relationship a thriving system that makes it so much that your partner prioritizes you like you become the priority within the relationship and that's the thing that I've been working on the past few weeks I wrote some notes taught some of the guys in reignited men and I absolutely love it because it it gives a structure to you know how to create priority and how to really reveal that to your partner in a way that then makes a want to build onto the relationship so at least it gives you an idea of how to break it down but at the same time it also gives you a, a way of identifying where your system is failing and then also a way of repairing that so the other um i like that because i've been implementing it in my own relationship when i spoke to my wife she was in, initially resisting what i was saying but then as i broke it down to her she's like actually makes sense because um the 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 truth of the matter is that a lot of you guys have got young children and your your hours where you can be available within that relationship for each other is probably 4 to 6 hours so it's less than an hour a day and you have to have a, a way of maxi- maximizing that time that you've got so again this is becomes important to actually see it as such because uh, if you think about time and energy expenditure then uh, if you don't take that into account in terms of changing your sexless relationship 
you will never change your sexless relationship. So thank you very much, guys. I'm looking forward to be teaching that uh, within the community. There'll be a full lesson. I will break down some of the key concepts within the podcast. So guys, thank you very much. I'll be seeing you guys soon. Take care.